Welcome back to Who Chose. Today on Who Chose, I'm going to show you multiple different methods for watering a pot automatically without any power at all. So here on Who Chose, we deal mostly with hydroponics, but all of these methods can be applied to potted plants, trees, shrubs grown in any method of your choosing. Now on this channel, I like to get lazy with the cultivation of plants. Not lazy in the sense of sloth, I'm talking lazy in the sense of efficiently growing plants with the minimal effort necessary. Maximizing our output with the minimal amount of effort. And sometimes this involves breaking some perceived rules of gardening, like growing without soil. Recently, I set up this. This is a second attempt at a hydroponic citrus orchard. The first attempt went well. The method of auto watering, I wasn't particularly happy with because the plants were in a substrate that ended up being too light for the overall growth that was achieved within the system. The plants got large, they toppled over. I've now amended that problem and I've moved to a feed from above method with hydroponic nutrient. However, I can see the flaw in this method being me. I am eventually going to get sick of coming along and watering these plants. And even though they are responding fantastically with brand new shoots on everything you see here, eventually my life will get in the way and I'll be unable to water them, which will rob them of potential growth over time in those periods without watering. So out of problems is born solutions. And those solutions are what I'm going to be exploring with you today. We're going to be exploring solutions for watering large pots automatically, gravity without power, with hydroponic nutrient, although you can just use water if the substrate in your pots is not hydroponic. But first we're going to need an area to put the trees. So I'm gonna clear out the way and then I can show you what I have planned. Okay, so the first designs that we're going to explore are going to utilize a pot within a saucer method. Now, the saucer will be these oval-shaped rubber buckets, and the reason that we'll use those will become clear in a second. I'm actually going to cut these buckets down to the height that we're going to have our media within these saucers, and the reason we're going to have media within these sources is because in hydroponics, our water is nutrient filled. So we don't want sunlight hitting our water because it will cause an algae bloom, which will utilize nutrients that we don't particularly want to happen. Uh, you could probably get away without using the rock media that I'm going to use to shield the water. However, it is going to shield it from evaporation as well. So I would actually probably recommend using a rock media to keep your water level out of the sunlight so that you can reduce evaporation within your system. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these down to the height that I want, and then we can lay out our system. So the height I'll be cutting them to is the height of this. This is the auto watering device that we'll be covering first, and it is called the Float Box Hydroponic System. It is a shielded cover that fits a float within it. So I'll cut these up, and show you how they work. And as you can see, our pot just fits perfectly into our oval tub. And there's no gap around the side, only enough to, for water to get around. And at the front, we've got enough space to put our devices. Okay, so the first device we'll be utilizing today is this. This is the float box hydroponic system. So I'm just gonna cut back to a previous video that I did with the float box hydroponic system to a younger, chubbier hooch to explain how the float box works. This is a 3D printable box with a lid that opens like so. And into this box, we then place a float valve. Screw up the nut on the back of the float valve, and then 
we have a fully self-contained float valve in a box. The box is designed so that when you fill around the box with pebbles, uh, it holds the box to the ground using these wings and lets the nutrient and water out of the box through the holes so that the plant can utilize the water and uptake it through its roots and then transpire it into the air. So if you can imagine, this will be within our saucer and around this we'll have rocks to guard the nutrient or water. And as the plant utilizes the water from below, the float will top up our system. To keep this in place, all I'm going to do is fill around it with an inert media. So river rock, scoria, clay balls, anything that's not going to affect the pH of the solution or water that's going in here is fine. And just quickly, these designs are all available in file form, STL file form, so that you can 3D print them at home. And you can find those files on my Patreon. And here we have the second device that I'm going to show you today. This is actually an AutoPot. So this is made by AutoPot. It's an auto float valve that actually has a wet dry cycle. So it will fill up the water to a certain point until this float turns off the flow. And then when the water drops down to a certain level, the suction will be broken the float will drop and allow the water to fill again to a certain point before stopping the raising of the water and allowing the plant to deplete the nutrient and water or just water if that's how you choose to use it. So that is going to be our second device and I'll show you how they both work after I've finished setting up. Okay, so for you it may be a little different if you're using soil or bag potting mix and whatnot but I'll be using a mixture of cocoa and scoria as it keeps the plants nice and upright by giving them a nice amount of weight in the base. The other reason that I'm using cocoa scoria mix is because the cocoa has a high CEC, which is cation exchange capacity, holds on to nutrient, holds on to water, and it releases the nutrient when the plants need it. So it's a really good growing media in hydroponics. It's also a really good soil amender for soil gardens as well. So this mix is going to be, it's a 16 kilogram bag of scoria and a 30 liter bag of cocoa. I think they're about the same. I think the cocoa is slightly more. And this is what the product looks like. Now you can't really see the scoria um, because the cocoa kind of sticks to it, uh, but it is in there. And we're just gonna plant straight into this pot. Okay, so into this, I'm going to be planting a citrus. Uh, this is a dwarf navel orange, a small potable navel orange. And I'm just gonna knock the dirt off it because I don't particularly, well, we don't need the dirt in hydroponics and we don't particularly want, what are you doing? We don't particularly want any of the organics that are in here. It won't be a particular problem. It's just not necessary. So we'll get rid of all that we can that's around the root ball and we can just start to fill around. Now, if my calculations are correct, I'll need this whole barrow full to fill around this plant. There's our first plant, now I'm gonna plant the rest. So I've got another dwarf citrus, this is a Lisbon lemon. This is a dwarf nectarine. And this one is a dwarf lemonade tree. So a bit of a mixture, pretty much all citrus except for a nectarine tree. Okay, 
So that's all the plants planted. I can now connect up the irrigation line to the system. Now the irrigation is really simple. It's just running from this 1000 liter IBC to my system. You can just hook it up to a tap if you're just using water, but I'll be using hydroponic nutrient, which is contained within this reservoir. I have got a video. It's right there if you wanna watch it on how to build this gravity feed reservoir. So I'm gonna run just a standard PVC garden hose as irrigation and this is light proof so it doesn't let any light into our nutrient solution or our water and from here we can just connect it to T pieces that run into each of our float valves and that will top up the nutrient from our reservoir okay so I'm just cleaning out the hose uh, this is new hydroponic nutrient coming out the end because I haven't connected up the auto valve side, but I just want to show you because this side is now connected up and once I block this, all of these valves should start working. So you'll hear them. There we go. As you can see, the water started coming in and it will start filling the base of these pots up to the point that I've set the float. And there are two ways that I'm connecting up the auto valves to my 13 millimeter pipe. One way is this end flow connector, which is a 13 millimeter pipe to a four millimeter pipe, which is what goes into our float valves. And the other way is exactly the same device, but it's made to connect up to a normal hose fitting. I actually prefer these because you can just sort of clip them on and clip them off at your leisure. It makes them really easy to disconnect from the system. I actually don't have enough of these fittings to connect this system up. So I'm going to jump onto CAD and I'm gonna design one of these that you can 3D print at home so that you can connect this system up. So I'll pop this on, there we go. So now I can turn these on and show you how they work. So I'm now gonna go and turn on the hydroponic nutrient. And you can see there, it's already starting to fill. That's fantastic. So this is gonna go through a wet dry cycle, unlike the other ones which aren't. I'm gonna leave these guys overnight. We'll come back in the morning and see how they've done filling up. And I should have by then a 3D printable four millimeter adapter for our pipe. Okay, so it's been about 24 hours and I've had time to design and print off this. This is a 13 millimeter to four millimeter barb. This is going to allow us to connect up our auto pots to our 13 millimeter garden hose. Now, more on the subject of the auto pot smart valve because I do not want to undersell the ingenuity that is the auto pot smart valve. Okay, let's see if I can do it justice. There are two main holes within the auto valve system. There is a hole at the base, which lets the water into the system. And there is a hole on the top, which is blocked to cause suction within the main cavity of the auto valve. Now, I'm gonna put a visualization on screen and I'll try and explain it as best as I possibly can. Water will enter into the auto valve system. As the water enters into the system, both of the floats will raise. As both of the floats raise, the water level causes the internal float to seal the hole where the water enters. The plants are then left with an exact amount of water that they can utilize. As the water depletes, the top float drops and seals the cavity within the float valve with a silicon seal over the top of this hole here. That actually causes the water within the float to remain at the level that it was when it's sealed, whilst the rest of the water actually drops. This keeps this hole sealed, but allows the water to drop to a point where when this vacuum is broken by the water dropping below these notches in the float valve here, when the vacuum is broken, the water within the float rushes out and the internal float drops, causing the seal on this hole here to be opened and allowing 
the water or nutrient solution to enter again, restarting the cycle. This is all done passively. It uses flotation, vacuum, and gravity all in a single device to cause a flood and drain of whatever area that it is in. It is a marvel of technology. It is a marvel of ingenuity and I am honestly blown away that someone is able to come up with this. Okay, now that my geeking out is done, we can connect up our marvels of technology to our rather bland gravity feed system. <laughs> but at least I can contribute a 13 millimeter to a four millimeter barb. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna cut this line. It's actually gonna rush out water when I do this, so I'll do that last. Um, I could just turn it off, but Where's the fun in that? Our four millimeter barb will just slide onto our four millimeter line, hopefully. Beautiful. And then we can just push that straight into our hose. Look at that. How good. Now, this is probably not going to be the strongest, so be careful with this. And I'll let you know how it goes. Okay, so not everything goes to plan. Uh, I'm going to turn this on and I'll show you what I mean. Around this nipple part, springs will leak sometimes. We really can't have this on a gravity feed because obviously uh, it's not on a timer and it's, and it's not leaking into the thing that we want to be watering. But I'll show you what I mean here. I'll turn the nutrient on and you can see it's actually coming back out of the four millimeter pipe and I'll just pull it off, I'll show you what I mean. So I'll put this one in and you can see it coming out of the side of this part here. So the four millimeters is the part that prints badly and it's happening with all of them. This one's really bad, but there's some that aren't so bad. So it might just be too fine for what we want. See, that one's not too bad, but you can see just minor print failures. So that's why I think you need to go with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bypass this completely. And now we're just gonna have to settle for something that I really didn't wanna do, but I'm going to do anyway. So I have a bunch of these. These are just a different style of end flow connector, but they're 19 millimeters. So I'm just going to adapt down from 13 millimeters to 19 millimeters, and then from 19 millimeters to four millimeters. <laughs> because at this point I want to get this video done and I don't want to have to reprint a bunch of these at four millimeters right now. So I connect up our line. I will get this auto valve connected. Yes. <laughs> oh, and one more thing. This design here is also available on my Patreon. It's something that I designed to house the AutoPot smart valve that can be 3D printed at home. However, there is a version of this that you can buy that isn't 3D printed that you can buy from AutoPot themselves. So if you don't have a 3D printer at home, you can actually purchase the smart valve and the enclosure from AutoPot themselves. And on that same train of thought, you can find any plastic box and do exactly the same thing that I've done here with a few holes and a little bit of ingenuity. All you need is a float valve and a small plastic box. Don't get tied down with the idea that you need a 3D printer to do all of this stuff. You can definitely do it with a little bit of ingenuity around the house. Okay, so I'm gonna show you inside the auto valves that were running since last night. And you can see this one's at the height of the cycle and there's about there's about an inch worth of water in there. It's probably a little bit higher because I did water these plants in. The plants will still utilize it and it will still run through its full cycle. So you can see in this one, uh, this is more like the water level that I was expecting. Uh, we've got about, not much at all really, seven or eight mil of water. So the water is very low on this one. This one is probably about halfway through a cycle. The grow media has taken up the water and as this depletes, as the plant uses more of the nutrient and water that's in the container, uh, this will deplete. The vacuum that's happening in this float valve right now, I can actually break that right now by lifting this and I'll show you. So I'll lift this and you should see down here the water starts to enter in again. There you go. So I've lifted that and I've broken the seal and you can see by the movement on the top of the water that is now refilling, which is really cool. Over here, 
we've got a float valve and see how this water is dirty that is because i watered from above this water is actually way above where I've set the float because I have watered from above. Okay, so if you ever get a ton of rain and want to empty out these pots, or you've watered from above and want to empty them out, there is a simple way to get the water out, and that is by siphoning it out. So you just use a piece of hose, you suck the water until the hose is full, and then you empty it out like so. And I'm going to go along and do that with all of these containers and replenish the nutrient and water within them. At this point, it's also a good time to set your float valve to the level that you want it to fill. So you undo the screw on the side of the float, move the float up to the level where it's closed, then move the float up slightly to the level that you want the water and close the screw on the side, making sure that when the float drops, it is still filling up the reservoir. Now in an ideal world, an idea that I've had is that you would have these floats and auto valves topping up to a certain point. And then you would also have a device called a bell siphon in another part of this container, which is an auto siphon, which basically automatically siphons when a water level is reached. Now with the auto valves, which flood and drain, up to a certain point, it's a very shallow flood and drain, so it won't reach the level of the auto siphon. And if you have your float valve set low enough, it also won't reach the level of the auto siphon. However, if you water from above or it rains, the water will reach the level of the auto siphon and drain the entire container out, refreshing the nutrient or water that's in it. This also allows you to, rather than <laughs> put your mouth on a piece of hose and drain it out, it would allow you to essentially overcharge the system and automatically siphon it. So you could just dump some water in it to the level of the auto siphon and the auto siphon would kick in and drain this system out and then replenish from your reservoir. So that's just another idea that people can play with. I might even play with in perfecting this system. And there it is, two fantastically simple and passive, yet really complex ways of automatically watering your potted plants. Now, we're just in time for the other way of automatic watering. Auto watering. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this episode of Hoochos. Happy hydroponicking, happy potted planting, and I'll see you next time on Hoochos. Ha, ha, ha.